What's up guys, welcome back to another Paladins video, I got some serious gameplay for you. After making last night's video, I got on the PTS and played a few games. I was lucky enough to get Cirrus a couple times, and so far, Cirrus seems like a really fun character. This character, in my opinion, is another they knocked it out of the park character, at least to me. Her design is really cool with this dark, cursed, black magic feel. Her voice is very dark and echoey, like part of her is talking from some other dimension. The abilities are also all really useful and satisfying and the sounds the abilities make are really cool as well. Maeve is probably the only other character I've ever thought was like this cool. If you don't know the abilities, I'll go over them real quick. Her primary is slow firing orbs that can pass through enemies and when they hit, they leave a stack on them that can go up to four. These stacks can be detonated with her Q. Every stack detonated deals 100 damage and heals you for 15% of your maximum health. Her right click is a heal beam of sorts, it has a duration and a low cooldown. Once it's locked on, it cannot be broken by walls or distance. You'd have to interrupt it yourself, get CC'd, or of course, die. It heals for 1000 health every 2 seconds. Her F has her walk through another dimension with like the coolest effect ever. While it's active, you are stealthed and cannot take any damage. Her alt is a ball that you throw out. Once it hits the floor, it'll tether nearby enemies and pull them all together. It will also stun them for about a second. So that's everything Cirrus can do. How does it all play out in-game, though? Well, you gotta get past her learning curve first. It isn't too steep like Maldamba's, but it isn't a super quick curve to learn like Ying, either. It's somewhere in the middle. After a few games, you tend to get the hang of her pretty quickly. This character is mainly all about decision making. You can only do one thing at a time. You're either healing, attacking, or escaping. You can't do multiple things at once like the other healers. So doing well with Cirrus completely relies on your game sense and when you decide to do what. This character doesn't really require any mechanical skill at all since the heal is a lock-on and the primary is slow moving spammable projectiles that really only require a little bit of prediction to land if you're not close up. Cirrus is really good at being a pocket healer because of how powerful her single target healing is. However, I don't recommend using her in that way unless your team is running double support. If you're putting all your healing into let's say a tank all the time, then the rest of your team is going to suffer and you're going to have a lot of team fights with people down. I saw a lot of Cirruses doing this last night. They really only ever healed the tank and we lose because the rest of us either would die because no healing or we would have to spend so much time out of the fight to regen. Both are pretty detrimental to your team obviously. Now just because Cirrus is a good pocket healer doesn't mean that she can't go ahead and sustain a team on her own. You can build her around healing by going up to tier 4 on her restore soul cooldown card. This will leave it with about a 3 or 4 second cooldown so you can heal more often. Not to mention you can run Kronos on top of that if you really wanted to. You can also get a legendary card that triples the range you can lock it on from and increases the duration by a second for even more healing. The duration is only really useful for things like tanks or keeping teammates who are in the middle of a battle alive long enough for them to escape or make a big impact. One mistake I found myself making sometimes was I kept the beam on a target even after they were healed up to full. That's not something you normally want to do most of the time. Healing something like a victor from half to full only takes like 2 seconds, so if he isn't taking a ton of damage during the heal, it's best to cancel it so the cooldown can start sooner. In this timber mill gameplay, you'll see me do this a lot. I'll heal the squishies up to full then stop. I only ever keep the beam on somebody if they're right in the middle of the fight and take a lot of damage. Like with the Fernando in this game. Keeping the beam on him kept him alive long enough to get a shield off cooldown so he could protect himself and stay in the fight even longer and wait for my next seal on top of that. Another mistake you want to avoid is overusing your movement ability. The movement ability is really cool and can really get you out of a tough spot, but it is like 5 seconds of you being out of the fight. Having a support out of a fight for that long is a bad thing. Having a support out of the fight for any time at all is kind of a bad thing. That's more than enough time for your teammates to die without any healing, so you want to use it very sparingly. I didn't really grab any cards that messed with this ability because of how sparingly I went and used it. I think I only really grabbed the tier 1 card that makes you faster in it to fill a slot. For the most part, you really only want to use this ability to contest a point safely or to escape something when you're alone and don't have any teammates to back you up. For the most part, this really is just a lasted desperation ability. Now, be aware that it does have an animation that has to play out before you actually go into it, so you want to make sure that you take that into account when using it, so if you do use it as an escape, you don't die before you enter it. There was a Lex that I was fighting that was going to alt me, and I waited too long to activate it, so I died. If I would have activated it right as his alt callout started, I could have lived. I do really think that when played correctly, the support can rival Ying and Maldamba, which have been the undisputed top two healers for a long time. 
When a team needs a solo healer in competitive or esports, you normally always see it being one of those two. So I'm glad Cirrus is looking like somebody who can bring a little bit more variety to the solo healing category. Not saying something like Pip can't solo heal a team, it just takes way more work and coordination that most people just don't really have, especially in like public games. The only time I've ever seen something like a solo heal pip work in a serious setting was with Astro Authority in the Master's Land. They all had a lot of coordination and teamwork, so they'd stay close and stack up all together to get use of that massive mega potion burst heal. Now going back to Cirrus, I do have one fear with her. Since her single target healing is really powerful, I fear that high res is going to nerf her healing, like how they did with Torv's shield. A lot of players just didn't understand that buying Wrecker wrecks Torv, pun kinda intended. You buy Wrecker and Torv is pretty much nothing, so I'm pretty worried that people who don't buy Cauterize for Cirrus will get her healing nerfed. High res really needs to stop nerfing things just because people refuse to learn how to deal with them. So fingers crossed that if Cirrus does get a nerf, it isn't for a reason like that and it's actually because she deserves it. You know, like how Lex has been getting nerfs because he deserves it. That's nerf and done right, for the, for the most part. Probably still needs a little bit more. We'll see. Well, anyway, we'll see how it goes, though. Only time will tell. It's been less than 24 hours of the PTS being up, after all. First impressions only go so far. And that's pretty much it, guys. I want to thank you all for watching. I very much appreciate it, and I'm going to see you guys later. Bye! Now that that outro is done, this video is pretty much over as far as commentary goes. I'm going to let the rest of this gameplay play out though in case you want to see it. So yeah, again, bye bye. Second swimming. It's working!